Welcome to a new video. In this video I want to talk a little bit about Android 12 and what's wrong with it based upon my experience on the Pixel 6. So let's get started. So here I have the Pixel 6 and Android 12 running on it and I want to explain a little bit why I have issues with Android 12. Let's go into this, as you can see, fingerprint scanner is working for some reason. Um, I want to compare it a little bit with Android 11, clean vanilla Android 11 that I have running here on my Xperia 1 Mark III. And I can also compare it a little bit with the Harmony OS that is running here on the uh, P50 Pro. So we start with the design. Material U is a new flat design that uh, they introduced. I have to say I was never fond of, uh, fond of the uh, default design even on Android 11 but the flat design makes sense here and you can see the notification area how it looks like. We have six icons here for quick toggles. We have notifications and we have silent notifications where I get a message that something I ordered via Amazon is there. Silent notifications are the ones that come in but they don't produce any sound. So those are usually the ones that have less priority. In Android 12 we have it a little bit different. First of all we have also a clear distinguish, distinguishing between quick toggles on the top and notifications and silent notifications on the bottom but they are like put in one big white slab. And it looks a little bit comic -y, I have to say. Look at the buttons, look at the space wasted. We only have four quick toggles. We now know what those icons previously we had only icons as quick toggles. So we did not even know what they mean. So we have to learn it, especially for those who never knew what this icon is or this icon. Uh, they have to learn it or hold longer in it to go to the settings. But now we have text here, which is nice. I, I, I would say it, it looks better than, um, than having nothing there. So it's more easy for and more user friendly. But so much wasted space. You can see internet is so, so small. Torch is so small. Here is wasted space. Bluetooth is small. And the inconsistencies is like mind blowing how this could go through the design studies. Four toggles, first of all, instead of six. Six was also already a reduction because I remember Android 10 uh, had on the Xperia 1, I think it was, and Xperia 1 Mark 2, I think as well, had also six toggles here. But if you go swipe down, you had one row more. So you had like then nine quick toggles instead of just six quick toggles. And you can see there's a lot of space on the Xperia. It's a tall device, but still a lot of space. So it could have more toggles. Uh, Gladly they fixed this, but what they did is like make dump down the first row of quick toggles to just four. And if you swipe down now, you have more quick toggles, but you still only have here four and therefore so in total eight. So it's less than what we had in Android 10. And when I switch over, I have more of those quick toggles as well. But look how ugly the slider for uh, brightness looks like. It's like, I don't know how one could design this so ugly. I really, the line there and this, it would be better if they wanted to make it bigger, make it like on Harmony OS when I go into here and I have this kind of slider for, for, for brightness. You can see it's nice and friendly and we have like this, uh, it is inside of a nice slider. But here it is just like a gray bar behind and it's like flat on flat. There's no distinguishing at all. Uh, is it a button? Is it a slider? It looks ugly. The sliders in general look ugly. The other gripe I have is uh, how do I switch off Wi-Fi if I want to switch off Wi-Fi? There's no easy way to do this on the quick toggles. I can if I, even if I go down here I can see okay a little bit more information like I can see the Wi-Fi I'm connected to but when I click here I just go into Wi-Fi settings and here I have the toggle to turn off Wi-Fi. So now Wi-Fi is turned off I have to click on done to be done. <sighs> Android 11 Turning off Wi-Fi, I'm done. See how easy it is turning on Wi-Fi, I'm done. It's connecting to the last Wi-Fi I was connected to. Android 12, I have to click here, turn Wi-Fi on, and then either click here or click on done and it will connect to the last Wi-Fi. 
see how much cumbersome, more cumbersome this is, especially if you are in a hurry to turn off Wi-Fi now, or get your data or something like this. And the, the other gripe I have with this is they put internet in here. So it's not only Wi-Fi, it's also your mobile data in there. So it, everything's cumbersome and put together into a category that usually is not there. But even if they do this, how is the consistency? of this option. So I have internet here. Great. I can choose my Wi-Fi networks. I can choose my mobile networks if I want to. Um, I don't have a SIM card right now, but you would have the option to choose your mobile network eventually or switch between 3 or 4 or something like this. Um, yeah, uh, I got a new comment. YouTube, now you're famous in my YouTube video. But what about Bluetooth? I have a lot of Bluetooth devices. I want to switch between like, um, want to switch to my watch. I want to switch to my Bluetooth headset or something like this. What am I going to do here? I click on it. Hey, it turns Bluetooth off. <laughs> I don't have, see this inconsistency. Like here we have internet switch to switch between Wi-Fi's, but Bluetooth, you also have devices to connect to, to disconnect something like this. I don't have the option. I just can turn it on off. If I want to connect to a Bluetooth device, I have to press hold longer, just like on the old Android devices. And then I get like the option to connect to my Bluetooth devices. Who invented this? Who let this pass through the testing stage? I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. Look at Harmony OS here, uh, how it's done here. We have the Wi-Fi option. We can still trigger this to turn off Wi-Fi. But if I want to choose my Wi-Fi and have this here, so if I, instead of pressing on the icon, I have here the option and then I can choose my Wi-Fi network. The same goes for Bluetooth. Toggle it on or off or click on this arrow here and you get all your Bluetooth devices you can quickly connect to. So much easier. It's not only on Harmony OS, it's on Emotion UI 12. It's also on Magic UI on Honor phones. Android 11, at least I can switch um, Wi-Fi quickly off or mobile data quickly off without any issues. I have to go here hold longer to go into my Bluetooth devices to choose my Bluetooth devices. No improvement. I would say it's a joke here on Android 12. It really is a joke. It is not consistent at all to not have this for Bluetooth, but to have it for alarms. Come on, Google, for alarms, for fucking alarms. How many alarms do you have? Or device control that no one really uses. Or Google Pay, which is like by default, if you add your Google Pay stuff and have your Google Pay stuff here and you want to do a YouTube video or want to show someone something on the quick toggles, they have to turn on Wi-Fi. They will see your identity, uh, the, your ID card, your MasterCard's uh, numbers here, which is, or your Visa card or whatever you have. Why Google? Why? So I have to go into settings and get rid of this stupid G Pay that no one really uses. And even if you use it, you don't want to be it like there and show up in your uh, devices as, as with your number and so on. I, I don't get it. And screen recording also have the option here. And then I get like here some options to do so. So it is super inconsistent why it's not for Bluetooth. Nearby context, the same thing. I have this. So the inconsistency here is very, very big. A good thing that I think as adding like the, the, the option to turn off the device. So I have now the option to lock down, power off or restart the device from within a software menu. You don't have to like press the button if I don't want to. Then the next thing that I want to show you is there is no, and this is a problem, a gripe that I had already with Android 11 uh, for a long time. It's like there's no quick toggle to toggle between um, can turn off data, mobile data or something if I want to, but there's no quick toggle to turn off uh, my ringtone to vibration or something like this. At least not here where I would yeah, expect them to be and Huawei, um, Honor, Xiaomi, they're all doing it better because here I have a quick toggle where I can go to vibration mode, I can go to um, completely silent mode or ringer mode. So I have this option here and here you can see way, way, way more options. I like this design in particular very much. It reminds me a bit of the Android of the iOS control center, but who cares if it's work, it's working. Um, here, what I have to do is I have to go to the volume rocker and then this icon here, I have to press it and then I can switch to vibration mode. I can switch to uh, completely silent or to ringer mode. And I have this ugly uh, slider here and an even uglier option just to slide and show different things that shows up here on the bottom. Very ugly design in my opinion. You can write down in the comment section what do you think. It's very subjective, I know, but this is what I have my greatest gripe with Android. Android 11 
doesn't look this ugly, I have to say. I also have this option here, but I can quick toggle and it's doing something directly. It's vibrating if it goes in vibration mode and it is uh, doing some sounds if it goes into sound mode and it's even telling me what it's doing. And here, nope, you have to guess. Ah, it's telling me what I what it's doing, but it's not vibrating at any point to to show me anything. There, I think there's a small sound. Yeah, there's a small sound going on. But anyway, I don't like this. This I really like it to have to have it here as an option at least. But you can see I don't see it uh, the option here. I have super other options that I really don't need, but this option I don't see here, and I really want this to to be here. To be honest, so. The whole design is like something that I really don't like. Another thing is, and this is maybe Google's Pixel specific, but see how big the icons are. As I was comparing it with the, the Android 11 here, you see how many, I have I think 35 icons here. And here I can have maximum 16 icons only on the desktop by default. Of course, I can configure this long press. Uh, I think it's customized. And uh, this is also another problem finding the right settings at a glance i'm not there notification dots uh, suggestions it's not here it's not in the home settings it's somewhere else hidden uh, but there's an option to choose the grid size but it's by default is it it's it's uh, meant for blind people i think it's very very big and i don't know why it's just a waste of time and a waste of space as well and the time to find the setting this is another gripe that i have so Swipe down, go to your settings, settings. I thought when people were saying, yeah, we don't like MIUI, we don't like Emotion UI, we don't like uh, Harmony US because the settings are so cumbersome. Have you ever dealt with the fucking Android default settings? It's The app is so confusing. I don't know where to search and find things. And of course, if you're using Android since the beginning of time, but <laughs> I was using Android on my Xperia 1, then I got the One Mark 2 and all the other devices, so I have some experience with vanilla Android. But finding the always on display, for example, as a fix for the fingerprint reader that does not really work on the Pixel 6 without it. Uh, I thought, okay, display can't be so hard. Always on display. Hmm. Hmm. You see, always on display. Hmm. Lock screen. Hmm. It doesn't have anything to do with lock screen. Search for always on or AOD. Always on display. Did I type it right? Always on display. Doesn't find anything. Hmm. Ah. Recent search results, just display lock screen, okay? Go in there, showing me this, always show time and info. And it took me like literally five minutes to figure out this is the toggle for always on display. It's called always show time and info, increased battery usage, okay. At least I found it and with this enabled, I have now my, with a little bug that appears every time I turn it off for some reason, I have my always on display and can, simply unlock the device with a fingerprint reader that works then. Uh, but finding this option, and it's not only this option, it's like find the option for the grid to change the app grid. It's not under apps, of course not. Is it under display? Uh, where you have display? Maybe it's under display. Screen timeout, uh, font size, display size. No, it's not this. It's not under colors, increased touch stuff, wallpaper and style. App grid, yeah. So scroll down, yeah. Here we can change the app grid. Why is it not just like in every other launcher here, customize option, and I have the app grid option here to change my app grid in the home settings because it's a home screen. I don't know, I don't get it. It's super, super cumbersome to use, I have to say, and it's getting more and more confusing for me that is not adapted to the system. and. I don't know, It's there's no problem in putting it maybe in here in customizing options and in the normal settings uh, to have it like two times there. There's no issue with this. <sighs> okay, this is my first graph. The whole design I don't like. Also the, the color 
theme like they would like praising this wallpaper style like you can change your color depending on the wallpaper that you choose oh it's i don't want to call it a feature it's just like the laziness of developers who don't want to ship a now uh, good looking uh, skin that works and looks nice like this here by default works nice looks nice has high contrast has no issues and as soon as you give people the option to choose this based on your wallpaper you losing the the contrasty option and you losing like the style everyone can have his own style granted but it's like a baby child childish like style that android 12 has chosen to be the material U is like the worst style i saw i think windows uh, 11 uh, what was it windows 11 or windows 7 where they had this like big huge uh, touch screen uh, tile uh, was even worse than this but this is, comes very close second when it, when it comes to design it's my opinion i know it's very subjective but this is one thing that is not subjective is uh, functions functions of google apps that are just a joke like i don't know in photos i saw it already i cannot reproduce it right now but the edit options had some options where it said it's a paid option you cannot use it here because i think it's a pixel i i have all the options but um it could be also that I saw it on my Xperia that Google Photos wants me to pay for some editing option, which is like really nothing I want. And I really don't like that. And in general, the, the, the Photos app is one of the better Google apps, but I still have issues here and there with finding photos. But the biggest gripe I have is with this Google Files app that comes by default on the Pixel and uh, should be, it's part of Android, I guess, or part of Google Android experience. It's one of the worst experiences I have. Just like what I do regularly when I do my camera tests, especially for the Pixel 6, for example, is like plug in my SSD. It's like a Samsung external SSD. Now CX File Explorer is turning up as another third party app, but doesn't matter. Um, the thing is like, okay, it's turning up here, a storage device, portable SSD, which is nice, so I can find it. What I want to do is sometimes get videos or photos over. So I have a video here, nice little overview of the videos, all like also by, by applications, uh, which video I have. But then I don't have, I have a delete option, I have various other options like open with, uh, and now I have a copy to option. Impossible. Don't tell me it's working now. I have now a copy to option. Okay. Copy to SD card. I can only copy to SD card. Really, I was testing this out just a few minutes ago. No move to, no copy to option I had here. Maybe they updated something in the background, but I don't, I didn't have a copy to option. I didn't have any options for this, for, for, for this file. But now I have a copy to option, but I can only copy it to the SD card. I can click OK and then I have to allow access. And I can allow access to my. Wait a second, is this working now? No, ah, that's the problem. <laughs> and now I have the same problem. It doesn't allow me accessing my external USB. It's not working. And before, I'm not sure what's going on, why is this working now? I'm literally, I didn't have the move, move to and copy option in the in the, the updated it now in the categories option so this made it now it's a, a little bit more sane i would say but before i didn't have the option to move or copy to which made absolutely no sense at all why is it there right now i don't know before i always had to go here into internal storage and then go into the dsim and have to know the structure where my camera puts my files and then of course i get this mini view which i have to switch to the big view and then i have to scroll a little bit until i find the file i want to copy uh, like this and then i have to option the copy to and here you can see the copy dialog looks completely different as well and i can go and copy this to my uh, external device at least i thought so so let's go here to the pixel directory let's see what happens uh, copy here and it says allow file access so i'm not able to copy this i say continue Okay, FAT32 data, this is the external SSD. Use this folder, allow access, and it's a loop. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. I don't have the option to copy anything. So this didn't change. I already did delete the cache and the data of this file, reinstalled Google Files, no improvement at all. I, the only thing that I see as improvement now is that I have the option to copy something from here, from the menu. Literally, it wasn't possible before. It was not showing any option for copying stuff. 
which is weird. Maybe because it's now detecting the SD, the, 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 let me, let me maybe do it a different way. Let's, uh, get rid of the, get rid of the SSD here, eject it, and then go into the files app and images and then see if I have a copy to option. Ah, now I don't have a copy to option. And uh, maybe this was the problem if I plug it in. Mm, do I get a copy to option? Now I don't get a copy to option. You can see that there is, this was the problem that I had initially. So you plug in your SSD, it is there, USB storage is available. And then if I want to copy an image, ah, now I have the copy to option. But literally it wasn't working before and I had this plugged in. So I have to either wait and anyway, it's super, super stupid, stupidly made. Before I didn't have the copy to option, now it's there. Copy to SD card, this is not an SD card. And allow access, always the same thing. And it doesn't allow me to copy stuff. If you know how to work this out on the Google Files app, then tell me because I just had to install a CX File Explorer have the library I can always copy stuff from here where is it uh, copy always copy no matter if I have my my, my uh, USB thing attached or not and copy it somewhere and I can always copy it for example pixel 6 here paste it in voila of course I have for the first time I have to also allow the access on the SD card but this is working fine on third-party apps and this is how a file explorer should work and not like this where first of all don't have a copy option at all to copy something and uh, not even like images copy them into onto the internal drive into a folder or something like that. not possible here I can only do albums or something like this and then i don't have literally the option to copy anything like this video it's not working i cannot copy it to my fat32 it doesn't work it's not working i don't know who invented this file files app it's just ugly and it doesn't work and the other problem is like what's this what is this pain share offline bin okay i can ex access this but so much wasted space they could have put in one of those things and if i go into here i want to copy something from i don't know from the files uh, from the sd card why do i have an sd card here i don't remember putting an sd card in here Uh, it is detecting my USB SSD card. Weird, weird, weird. Other storage devices. I can put other stuff. Okay, cloud stuff. Okay, granted, nice. But still, if I want to copy something, why can't I not like uh, have like an option here? Okay, copy to. Then instead of like saying only SD card, I have like an option to choose also internal stuff here and have like. Uh, my categories or my storage devices listed here in a tree like every other file manager would do it i don't know this google files app is crap in my opinion and lots of google apps are not working the way they should so in general what is wrong with android 12 i think i demonstrated to you a lot of things that are wrong with android 12 in my opinion you can write down in the comment section what you think about android 12 if you like it if you hate it uh, if it's the best thing uh, the best invention since sliced, sliced bread uh, write it down in the comment section uh, that's everything for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching until the next time bye